Hello and welcome to the Dumb Shits Guide to cr the Create mod. Um, in this video, I'll be showing you the basics of some core fundamental tools and useful tips that you can then expand on to create other machines. Um, part of Create is that it's a very versatile mod with a lot of options, especially with the many, many add-ons it has. So I won't be going over every single machine, how every single machine works, how to automate this, how to automate that, how to do everything. This is just basically giving you some core fundamental tools to get started. And if you want to expand off of this, then you're more than welcome to. There are plenty of other videos out there. Um, I just want to give you a good baseline to work with. So let's start with um, generating rotational energy. Um, the way to do that initially is with water wheels and also windmills. Uh, I'm using water wheels as an example, but you can also make windmills. Um, water wheels take water, as we can see here. There's water here. Um, you can't really see it very well because of the shaders, but it's basically causing this water wheel to rotate, which is in turn rotating this shaft. Now that's how Create works, is instead of having um, FE or RF or AE or EU, like other mods, it's basically uses rotational energy generated from windmills, water wheels, that sort of stuff. Um, the more uh, of a rotational generation source you have on a network, as it will, um, the more machines you can have running. So this current water wheel generates 512 stress units at its current speed. So that basically means that you can have 512 stress units worth of um, mechanical machines on this basically line. Um, you can multiply that by having multiple water wheels so if you had, for example, one, two, three, four, five of these, then you'd have five times the amount of rotational stress. Some important things to have are your engineer's goggles and your wrench. Now I've got a wrench on me already, which is good. And I've already got the engineer's goggles equipped. The, what I see here, this little tool tip that pops up, the 512 stress units, that's shown by the goggles. The goggles let you see um, if contraptions are overstressed, um, how much stress that a certain device is using, etc., etc. Now let's talk about your first probably thing you're gonna get started with. Um, for the sake of these examples from here on out, I'm using motors. Um, these aren't available in base create. Um, they're part of an add-on, I believe, uh, creative motor. Um, oh, maybe it is part of base create. I thought it was part of a different mod. Let's have a look. Motor. Ah, oh, okay. The creative mode is part of create, but the other motors are part of create new age. Um, I'm just using them for the sake of example because I, so I don't have to set up a water wheel every time I want to demonstrate how something works. First thing you want to get is a belt. A belt will basically connect to two shafts. So you right click on one and right click on another and it will go and it will transmit in the direction of the shaft that has the rotational power attached to it and it will rotate any other shafts connected to it. You can also go up with these. So if we go for example like this and like this we can transmit that rotational power. Oh, wait, no. What? Yeah, like this. I don't know why it wasn't working the first time. But yeah, you can transmit the um, belt upwards. Um, I believe you can only do this one at a time, however. Now we have gearboxes. Gearboxes, basically, they will take the rotational energy and they can split it in four different directions. However, part of that is it changes the direction. So if we have a look here, it's going this way, so right to left, but the gearbox rotates it from left to right. You can also chain multiple gearboxes next to each other. So you can have, for example, multiple things going off of each of these in their own separate machines. Um, it's used as a good way to, one, change the direction of rotational energy, as you can see here, or um, carry rotational energy across a distance, the same way you would with the belt. As you can see though, they're all transmitting different directions. So this one flips the direction, this one flips it back, and this one flips it back again. So that's how the gearboxes work. You have the same thing with the vertical gearboxes. The vertical gearboxes do the exact same thing, but vertical instead of horizontal. Again, switching the rotational direction each time they go up. Another way to increase the rotational direction and also increase speed is with cogwheels. So if you have a large cogwheel on your, um, attached to your rotational energy source, source and a small cogwheel attached to that one, let's rubbish another shaft, then the smaller shaft will actually be faster. Or no shaft, smaller cogwheel will actually be faster. The inverse is also true. If you have a small attached to a large, then it will actually slow down the rotational speed. 
So this is a good way in the early game to speed up your um, rotational energy. Now let's talk about ways to generate rotational power. So first off, there's cogwheels and windmills. Um, if you don't want to do either of those and you don't have access to the new age create, then we have what's this here, which is a boiler. So basically how this works is you have a bunch of fluid tanks. You form a multi-block with them. It has to be a square. So you can't do a rectangle, but you can do a 3x3. Three three. I think 3x3 three is the size limit. Let's have a look-see. Yeah, 3x3 three three is the size limit. Let's see what the capacity to go up is. Oh, there's pretty much no vertical cap from what, from what I can see, at least. So you can fit a lot of um, fluid in these. Get rid of that. So what we have here is a setup where we're using fluid tanks. So we have a three by three by four. Then we have these blaze burners underneath. These need to be fed with either coal, charcoal, coal blocks, or I believe, I think they're called soul cakes. No, I believe there's some kind of cake, blaze cake, um, that will get the, these working very, very fast. Then we're gonna wanna have a mechanical pump. In this case, I have three. Oh, not mechanical pump. Yes, sorry. Um, basically, this pulls from a source upwards into the tank. So you use the you can use the wrench to rotate it. So currently it's facing down, so it'd be putting the water here. And so we want it pulling the water up. And then it's going into these fluid tanks. Now these require a cogwheel function. So I, you can see I have a cogwheel here that's rotating all of them. And then I have a gearbox to power the cogwheel and a motor in this example, so that we can have the rotational energy going this way instead of down. Because the cogwheel, as you can see, is facing up. And then that goes into here. You have the blazers in here, and then you need to feed them with... Let's let's give them some blaze cakes. Blaze cakes. What are these? There's a creative version. Interesting. So let's fire these guys up. And they will basically heat up the water to create steam. And that steam goes into a steam engine, which you attach a shaft to, which then can be used to generate rotational force. As you can see, very quick. Uh, we're going to want a vertical gearbox for that example, actually, I think. Bam. And now we've transmitted that power. And that's much faster as well. And you also generate a lot more stress units. So this setup is currently generating 10 million stress units. Which is... No, not 10 million. 10,000.67. Sorry, I don't know why I said 10 million. So one of these is generating 32 by itself, or 3,200, I guess, I think. It's really hard to tell what, because um, the, there's a comma and there's also a de decimal point. But as you can see, we're generating quite, quite a bit of rotational power, which means we can have multiple machines. What are some machines you can have in the early game? So a good one is a mechanical saw. A mechanical saw can be used to automate the production of stripped logs. Which, you can be, which are used to make the casings, which are very important for this mod. Casings are also really good because you can put them around belts for aesthetic purposes. So if we have a look over here, you can add like um, casings to the belts. I believe you can also add them to the shafts, yeah. So you want to not have the ugly shafts just sticking out. You can hide them with um, these casings. And you use casings in a lot of recipes. So you can use this mechanical saw to create the stripped um, logs. Uh, however, something important to know is you want the mechanical saw uh, rotating in the opposite direction to what um, your um, your belt is, basically. So we'll do this, for example. Grab another mechanical motor here. Actually, we'll put it here, just for the sake of demonstration. So attach this one to this. So as you can see, they're rotating in opposite directions. So let's quickly... Actually, just go like this. And we'll grab another belt. Once my inventory loads, there we go. So we'll go like that to rotate all of these. And we'll go like that and like that. So now they're rotating this way. The saw is rotating that way. Um, as you can see, as it's turning that way. So now let's grab a spruce log, for example. I believe you can just place it on. No, you cannot. All right. Here's where the next important thing comes in. The funnels. So the andesite funnels work by default. They just pull items and put them onto a belt. The brass funnel is one that can be configured. So let's grab a chest. Uh, by configured, I mean um, you can set filters for it. So let's grab chest, chest, and a funnel on either side. And then we're going to place 
our spruce log in here. And it's going to go over the saw blade, like so. Now, as you can see in this example, it's made one of these hollow logs. We actually don't want that. Um, but I think that's part of the all the mods nine. Um, I don't think that's, I'm not sure if that's part of base create. But we want the stripped variants. We're going to set that as a filter. And now if we place it in, it'll only create stripped spruce logs now. And that's been made. Now we have the deployer. Now, it's a, it's a bit close to everything else, but basically the deployer, you place an item in here, for example, a andesite alloy, one of these, and you place it in the hand. And basically, if there's an item coming along under the belt, then it will stop the item and it'll like basically put the that thing onto the item in the same way that you manually apply something in game. So the way to make casings in game is to manually apply a andesite or a brass um, to a um, stripped oak log to create the casing. Uh, let's have a look here. So yeah, manual item application, you place an andesite alloy on it. The deployer can do this automatically. The mechanical press, let's have a look see. What can the mechanical press make? It's got a few options and I haven't used this one much personally. But yeah, you can use it to compact things down. So for example, uh, we want to make a like nine nether rack into a compressed nether rack then you can just use a mechanical press and you're also going to need a basin, which we have one over here. Place the basin underneath it and it'll order, when the items go in, then it'll press and then it'll spit the items back out into whatever belt you want. Same with the mixer. The mixer can be used to craft many, many things. Uh, it really depends on what mod pack you're running with. If it's all the mods 9, for example, um, you have a lot of options. So you can use it to create potions, you can use it to create dyes, you can use it to create a lot of different things. You can use it even to mix um, certain things, like you can use it for the, the combs, for example, um, to make, uh, sorry, the combs from Productive Beats to mix them to create their respective byproducts. Um, you can use it to craft new items, you can use it to make food, for example. There's a lot of different options. Um, it does require heating though. So you're going to need some of these blaze burners that we, we mentioned earlier. There is many, 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 many more options for what you can do with Create. Um, these are the baselines to get started. Now, if you want to try something else that's new that I haven't mentioned in this video, for example, let's go just at Create uh, in our um, JEI here. So at Create, um, we want to m you do something with this mechanical drill. So you can see that it has Ponder, which basically means if we hold down W, it opens up a visualization of how to make a certain device or how to set up a certain device and how it works. Um, it has timestamps, it has the ability to pause, it has the ability to um, go on to different um, like steps, I guess, or different use cases. So this is just the basic breaking blocks of the mechanical drill. Here's an example of a more like fleshed out contraption, I guess. And there's a whole like there's a whole fucking million different things that you can look into with this mod. Um, and it has a bunch of different use cases where you can have things working together, so on and so forth. Um, so if you want to automate something, um, there's either the Ponder, um, you can look through some of the options. So for example, crushing wheels, um, they can be used to crush down items into um, crushed versions, um, which actually is a form of early game ore duping. Um, there's fans, which can be used to um, automatically smelt certain items. So like, so let's say, for example, you want to um, have the something with the fan. So we want the encased fan. Um, I believe it should be here. So we're going to ponder it, and it's going to show um, how you would set up a encased fan machine, I guess. So for example, you could put um, lava in front of an encased fan and then a belt in front of that, and then you can use it to automatically smelt items. And you can have a system where you have a crushing wheel to crush the items, and then you have a um, lava and some encased fans to smelt them. That's also a perfectly valid option. And in my All the Mods 9 playthrough, that's what I set up. So um, these are some of the fundamental tools you can get started with with Create. Um, there is so much more than this. This is just the basic, um, how do I get started and how do I automate the basic resources? Because you don't really want to spend a million hours automating rose quartz, for example. Um, but in Create, you can literally attach some sandpaper to do a ployer and then pump some rose quartz in and it'll automatically work. 
The last thing I will talk about, however, is the mechanical crafters. Basically, these can craft any recipe um, that can be crafted in a crafting grid or even outside of a crafting grid, grid if the config allows. So, for example, in All the Mods 9, if we go the star, the star can only be crafted in a Greg Tech uh, Starforge or a mechanical crafter. However, this is a big thing of mechanical crafters. So, it would have to be a, basically this layout in the real world. So it would have to be three and then three and then three. So for example, let's just like make the base of it. So this is just the base of the star. You'd have to work it all the way up and around. You can also configure these so that um, they move the items in a certain direction. So you want them all connecting together basically um, to go to one output slot. So you can rotate them like so. And we're gonna go like that and like that and like that. And you basically want to flow them all into one um, of these mechanical crafters, and then that will be spat out onto a funnel or a belt or a depot, whichever you prefer. So you can um, use also, you can use like other mods, or you can use the in-game mechanical arm, uh, mechanical arm, which can, can be configured, um, and that can place certain items in certain locations. So, for example, you could have it place um, for sticks, one wood here, one wood here. And then it would automatically craft using stress, um, yeah, rotational stress along these cogwheels, and then spit it out onto a depot or a belt or wherever you feel like. So yeah, this mod has a lot of options. It's extremely versatile. There are thousands and thousands of unique designs. Um, it's very hard to sort of go over everything here, just because of the fact that it's sort of like Minecraft Redstone, where the core fundamentals of it are very simple. However, it has a such a wide variety of things you can do. Um, there is literally like thousands of different possibilities of contraptions you can make. But these are some of the useful things to help keep you or get you started on the mod. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed um, this um, little look into Create, and I hope it helps you um, on your Create journey. Thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely rest of your day.